morning. When I was 17, I tried to take my own life. I tried to die by suicide. 17. Probably around the same age as some of you out there. I didn't see any hope. I didn't see any future. I didn't see any light. Depression grabbed me at that age. I was depressed for about a year and a half, two years. And it brought me to a dark, dark place. I was being bullied. I was bullied for four years. The bullying started at the end of first year, started second year. I knew it was something more than the regular school slagging or the school sneering. I knew it was a little bit more sinister. So for bullying really to take place, it has to be targeted. It has to be intentional and has to be repetitive. I was emotionally bullied, I was verbally bullied, I was physically bullied. It was nearly 20 years ago, so cyberbullying wasn't, wasn't really there for me, thankfully. In terms of the physical bullying, I would have been kicked, I would have been punched, I would have been thrown around the place, would have had rocks thrown at me. It started off with maybe two or three people and then it went to maybe five, six, seven people at a time, I would have been thrown around like a rag doll. Sadly, you know, I got used to the physical stuff. I got used to the punching and the kicking. But it was the other stuff, it was the emotional stuff that really, really challenged me. Sticks and stones may break my bones. You've heard that one? But the names hurt me. The emotional side of it, I, I didn't know how to react. I didn't know how to respond. I, I didn't know how to register the emotional and mental side of it. That was the culture back then. Nobody spoke about mental health. We didn't have the likes of these brilliant seminar. We didn't have mental health weeks that you might have in school. Nobody spoke about bullying, about it's okay not to be okay. That wasn't the way it was when I grew up. You have a great opportunity now that you can learn to express yourself. I couldn't do that because it would have been a sign of weakness to ask for help. And it took me into a very, very, very dark place. If we fail at something, let's look at it from a different angle. Let's reframe it and see how else we can achieve our goals. So no failure, just feedback. Remember that. And I'm very lucky. I've, I've done a lot of work on myself, but I'm surrounded by great people. I have great family, I have great friends, I have the best wife in the world, and I have two beautiful kids. And I know who I am. And I'm happy. And to me, success is being happy. So remember, right behind failure is success. Right behind weakness is strength. And right behind vulnerability is growth. So we need to tap into our, our own emotions. We need to allow ourselves to be vulnerable. Being vulnerable isn't weak. Being vulnerable is, is strong. It means you're in touch with your emotions. Emotional intelligence. Being in touch with who you are getting to know yourself, getting to know your strengths and your weaknesses and liking that person and accepting that person and accepting you for who you are and allowing you to be you and not trying to be somebody else to impress somebody. It's you living your life, you being who you are and you treating yourself with love and kindness and respect. You need to respect yourself. And don't let people 
drag you down and don't accept people's negativity. What bullies do is they try and take your power. They try and take your power to empower themselves. That's what they're doing. And if we allow them to do it, they will continue to do that. When I was 17, I allowed the bullies to take my power. And I permitted them to continue doing that. Now, I'm not saying it was my fault, but I should have taken ownership of looking after myself. I didn't treat myself with love and kindness. I didn't treat myself with respect. So I allowed it to happen. I didn't ask for help because I didn't want to be perceived as weak. But it's about you knowing that you deserve to be happy. Every one of you deserves to be happy, no matter what the situation is. And every one of you deserves to feel safe. I didn't do that. And I nearly paid the ultimate price. I felt I'd no other option, but there's plenty of options out there. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay to reach out and to ask for help and to be vulnerable. Allow that. But it's about you standing up for yourself, you being proud of who you are and living the life that you want to live. Studying the courses you want to study when you finish school. Go traveling if you want to travel. If you love somebody, tell them. But you owe it to yourself to treat yourself with respect, love, kindness, and forgiveness. I'm going to leave you with one little thing that somebody told me years ago, and it changed everything for me. If I have a present, okay, and I offer the present, say, to Irene, and Irene accepts the present, who owns the present? Irene does. If I have a present and I offer it to Irene and she doesn't accept it, who's left with the present? Me. If I have an insult and I offer it to Irene and Irene accepts it, who has the insult? Irene. If I have an insult or a negativity and I offer it to Irene and Irene doesn't accept it, she says, do you know what? I'm not accepting that. Who's left with it? Me. So it's about not accepting people's insults, not accepting people's, people trying to drag you down, not accepting that negativity and standing up for yourself and saying, I'm not having that. I'm not accepting that. So it's about accepting you for you, standing up for yourself, being yourself, being safe and being happy. Thank you.